What's the most effective way to quit smoking? It's a really important question because let's face it, um, smokers have been smoking for a very long time. If you're smoking, then you, you know, you've know you been doing it probably for quite some time and you want to make sure that you pick the most efficient route to go about quitting. It's very, very common that folk will look at things like nicotine replacement therapy, um, you know, maybe even going over to vaping or some kind of drugs to do that. And I don't think that's necessarily the best way to go because they're pretty low success rates overall, although they can work for some people. Going cold turkey can work for some people. Um, but we do know that the evidence is at least this, that if you try and do it by yourself with no plan, no support whatsoever, you've got a sort of a three to six percent chance, you know, 14 months down the road of actually being a non-smoker. So now this comes up because there are some people who recommend that what you want to do is have a combination of medication and counselling. And whilst I understand the kind of the, the principle behind this, I think that there's there are a few challenges with that. And I think that I want to look at kind of a little bit deeper into this so that you can make an informed choice about where you want to go in terms of your decision to quit smoking. And that's really the key thing, first of all. And I think it's really important to just mention that sort of frame before we get into anything else, because no matter what approach you're going to go through, your life is going to change. All right. The way you think about yourself is going to change. Your sense of self-identity is going to change. The way you behave throughout the day is going to change. The way you interact with other people, perhaps even some of the people you interact with, the way other people perceive you is going to change. When you stop smoking, your sense of taste and smell may well change. You'll probably have more energy, more confidence. All right? these, All these things have a knock-on effect in your life. And a part of you knows that it's going to be some pretty big changes. Now, overall, most people get that it's a pretty good thing to go down that route. However, with the complexity of the way that it interacts with all facets of our life and also the kind of fears of how we're going to manage, you know, social situations or anxiety or boredom or rewarding ourselves or just the kind of camaraderie of a smokers club or the, the, the emotional crutch that is smoking mean that this is quite a big deal. So you have to have a strong reason, first of all, a strong personal motivation, a strong desire that will allow you to say, OK, I recognise that all that stuff is there, but I'm going to do it anyway. All right. So without that, really, whatever combination you decide to use is probably going to be um, at best an absolute slog. And at worst, of course, failure. Now, medication, listen, right? Think about what smoking is. Smoking is an emotional crutch. It's a, it's a dependence on something that is causing you to, um, you know, look to it for support. Now, most people assume that it's physical, that the that it's the, the strongest part of this is nicotine. In my experience, now I've worked two and a half decades with people to quit smoking, Really, the nicotine withdrawal generally is the smallest, most minor part of this. All right, and we'll get to that in a little bit. This is a completely different kettle of fish to, say, um, uh, working with somebody who, who is coming off alcohol or heroin, where there is a much stronger kind of physiological um, body reaction and where actually coming off might be very, very dangerous for them. And so for alcohol, you know, for any of those sort of stronger drugs, then absolutely, they'd be very, very careful and work with fully trained medical professionals to do that. Now, it's very different with nicotine, OK, because when you think about it, why do people smoke? All right? I mean, a lot of people don't like the taste of it and the cough and all this kind of stuff and being a social pariah and the money they spend and the fear about like their health. But it's a very strong psychological dependence. OK, it's the way they cope during the day. It's the way that they deal with life. It's the way they reward themselves after a meal, you know, or after doing a piece of work. It's the way they deal with anxiety or boredom. So there are so many different ways that, that people use smoking. You know, a lot of people who come see a lot of clients used to use smoking to just as a way to interact with other people, to interact with their friends. 
to even to have a conversation with someone or just for something to do with their hands. So bearing this in mind, you've got this, the, the way of coping emotionally is by going externally and being, shall we say, dependent on this external habit. Replacing something external with some other kind of drugs or with another negative habit with detrimental physical proven physical detrimental effects to your health and your brain and your heart and all kinds of manner like vaping makes no sense whatsoever for sure the idea of having some counseling some stop smoking support expert support with that absolutely makes complete sense all right somebody who can help you who believes in you can help you put a plan together it's very very good um but i think it's important to be cautious around looking for um, a drug replacement or medication replacement unless your medical professional registered medical professional says it's really really important because of some you know because of some underlying uh, health challenge okay so in terms of what's the most effective way to quit smoking first of all we've seen that the the way to, to go about this is to really identify a strong reason <clears throat> the most effective way to quit smoking is to have a deeply strong personal reason and personal connection to wanting to quit because what that's going to allow you to do is to look back at the rest of your life and say okay even though it's going to affect my life even though there may be some things i'm frightened about even though i can see you know it's the great unknown this is why I want to do it. I want to do it for my grandchildren. I want to do it for a sense of pride. I want to just do it to, for myself to show that I can do it. <clears throat> you know, I want to do it for this reason. It's personal to you and you chose to do it. Then <clears throat> look at the, um, the kind of options for you. Having a plan in place is going to really, really help. <clears throat> and having a a stop smoking expert who you can work with is something that's going to really really help you because think about it like this well we know that if people try to quit smoking by themselves then they're going to struggle absolutely hands down if they've got no support and no plan in place they're going to struggle and so i want to talk a little bit about the kind of support that might be valuable for you because it's an effective way to quit smoking once you have your deep personal reason or deep personal reasons all right that you chose that are visceral to you that get you feeling you know you feel almost riled up energized strong emotionally connected to them so look um i've worked now for a very long time helping people quit smoking and when we have a a free consultation where we chat about the the motivation to quit once we know that we've got this in place then it's time to talk a little bit about expectations and the mind you see if it's not so physically addictive smoking but that is one small minor element of it what is the bigger part the bigger part is your psychic your psychological your mental expectations about what smoking will do for you about how hard it is going to be to quit about how you will manage your life when you don't have this in it the fear that you get about removing something the, the FOMO the fear of missing out when you think about getting rid of this habit that has been with you a stalwart of your life throughout difficult times throughout good times this emotional crutch and that is exactly where having some support to come in can be really really beneficial because an expert can be with you and identify help you identify that these deeper subconscious uh sort of emotional connections because these inner triggers these inner desires are the things that need to be dealt with all right it can seem as though it's uh, something very physical on the outside that needs to have happen okay and on one level think about it how easy it is to quit smoking you simply stop going to the shop and buying cigarettes and you stop picking them up you stop putting them in your mouth you stop lighting them i mean literally you just stop doing a bunch of stuff and you just get on with your life right so 
it's not as though um, you even have to, it's not like you're training to lose 10 stone or trying to run uh, an ultra marathon. You literally just stop doing it and you can do it. You know, it could literally happen in a second. Right, I'm not buying them anymore. That's it. Job done and you get on with your life. But why does that happen such, you know, why is that not such a common occurrence? Well, the reason is these emotional connection these emotional needs these subconscious kind of triggers that are in place and the beautiful thing is if you work with somebody to who understands working with the subconscious mind well then it becomes a lot easier all right because then the most effective way to quit smoking can be tailored to you and your deep personal reasons so we can leverage that deep personal motivation against those shall we say free floating anxieties worries fears dependencies and we can take that desire which is a trigger to your subconscious mind that something needs to change reassure your unconscious that you're going to be okay and then ask your unconscious to make the changes necessary for you now here's the thing what are the subconscious changes that are right for you well i don't know and you don't know because they are by their very nature unconscious but when you've got somebody who's very skilled with working with the unconscious mind then the beauty is we can leverage the communication portal the communication highway with your unconscious work with your unconscious to make the changes that need to happen and let your unconscious mind figure out all the details uh, over the, the coming days and weeks that are right for you to make sure that everything is in place for you. And how long does this take? Well, typically in my experience, one session. And it can happen in as little as 10 or 20 minutes. Uh, sometimes it'll be an hour, sometimes it can be a little bit longer. But we work to get the job done. And this is really, really important because, look, increasingly we know now that the the what happens inside is the way that we're driven to perceive the world the motivation that we have even decisions inside our mind are made at the unconscious level first up to a second before we're aware of them consciously it's really really interesting the the research that's coming up now about the the powerful vast storehouse of your unconscious mind of the the emotions that are there the your values that are there the unconscious basically is is will make things happen automatically and does most things automatically and it'll do things that it believes are for the highest good and also it will it will seek to from an evolutionary point of view it will seek to optimize things to make them most efficient so if you've got a habit that has kind of been working for you your unconscious mind has a tendency to kind of do that to reduce cognitive load on your limited conscious mind the the conscious critical logical thinking mind okay because otherwise what happens is if you start to consciously think about all the triggers all the emotions all the things you're going to do in your life all the fears how you're going to manage it how you're going to do it how you're going to plan for it immediately it's such a huge cognitive load mentally you feel so overwhelmed mentally it creates so much stress the likelihood is you just revert to the old habit and go out and do that and so by by dealing with this complex um communication network between your conscious desire to smoke and your the unconscious automatic habits inside we can help you have the most effective way to quit smoking in my experience by and large for the majority of people um, and of course, they're not medical advice. Your medical registered practitioner is the person who can dispense that. But in my experience, working with people all over the world now, seeing hundreds and hundreds of people quit and stay quit and quit in one session, um, the most effective way to quit smoking is have a strong reason and then leverage your unconscious mind to help you. Okay. And, um, you know, if you want to throw in something else into the mix there, by all means however it's generally not necessary and if you are only 
doing, if you're only using, um, say, nicotine replacement therapy, your chances of staying a non-smoker are, are quite slim. Okay, that's what the evidence shows. All right, so lozenges, whether it's patches, any of those things, gum, it's going to be quite difficult. And the reason is now that the reason is this: we want to take care, remember, of the the psychological side. And also the, the the physical side. The physical side is really, really quite minor and will happen incidentally when the psychological side is dealt with. There are some people who feel that, who have such a strong belief that they're addicted, that they actually get some psychological relief from um, the thought of taking nicotine replacement therapy. But really, it's not necessary. It's not going to be ideal for you and for your highest good in the majority of cases. All right. So a combination of strong reason, a uh, combination of strong uh, support and working with your subconscious mind is very, very powerful. Typically, that's through things like NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, various forms of hypnosis and hypnotherapy, uh, many forms of which I'm trained in, as well as coaching and various other things. But the key is to work with this. The key is to deal with that sense of expectation that comes from uh, the the way that you feel and your sense of expectation around quitting smoking. Once you do that, you'll have the most effective way to quit smoking because you can quit. You absolutely can do this. Okay. And I want you to know that it can happen quickly and easily once you find the right approach for you.